Hey, what's up guys, Arab here, and welcome back to the episode of my F1 Road to Glory series in 2020 for episode number four today for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Yes, Formula One in real life may have halted in 2020, but here virtually we are plowing on ahead for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Last time out, we had a very topsy-turvy time. Our team let us down, but we also finessed the entire grid. But alas, we're in then for a new set of tyres and a brand new front... Uh no, 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 oh my god! You have permission to say, oh cock. <laughs> and once again, another safety car, another great finesse of the entire field. First podium of the season, and oh. So yeah, here we are then. We're doing what Formula 1 in real life cannot do, and we're here at the fourth round of the 2020 season at yet another Grand Prix circuit, which will be literally cancelled in real life. Uh, but uh, you know, we, you know us. Here at the Road to Glory series, we're apparently pulling off miracles. I mean, to be fair, the fact I'm still recording this series and haven't jumped off a bridge in anger is a miracle in itself. And hopefully today and tomorrow and so on for the rest of the series, there will be many miracles to come as we try and get this Williams car to some glory and try to win a World Drivers' Championship here with the team. And I'll tell you we can, the team, of course, but it's more really about me. Let's be real. So we come here to Baku, then positive spirits. We obviously finessed the entire grin for the third time in a row now. We have got no failures on the car for upgrades here. Did you hear that in the back? No failures on the car. Let's just get away from that again. Once again. I did warn you I was going to say this. Once again, it's, it's because technically we didn't actually purchase any upgrades. But when you don't... That's still, that's still, that's, I think that still counts as having no failure. So I'm going to count that one. But to be fair, you've got to give that to me because these are live shots of our team making our car, let alone upgrades or not. From the rear mount using bolts three, inserted from the front of the mounting. James, does it need a washer? Yes or no? It really is a miracle, actually. Talking about miracles, the car even turns up every single episode here. So let's all be thankful for that. And let's all just take the easy win of no upgrades, no failures there. So we move through. This is the first time that maybe this actually is an issue as other teams have finally actually upgraded in the season there. So we might be a tad slower. But to be honest, here at Azbajan, you've got those long straights. I always like into motorways. And remember, our car is the best engine engine on the grid by an absolute mile. Like we're our half our engine performance is the normal performance for most of these cars on the grid. So I think we've got a very, very good chance, dare I say it, of going for the looking left and right, making sure no one susses around. The double podium. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Swiftly moving into qualifying then with absolute confidence that we can actually establish that potentially in the race. But first and foremost, I have to get the first part of the weekend done in qualify. Well, at the moment here, still in P6 there. Hamilton in the racing point car in P1 though at the moment through the middle sector there, giving the Ferrari guys a charge there. So very much so Hamilton's made the correct decision by moving to uh, the racing point or the Mercedes B-Spec car for this season in 2020 here in the Road to Glory career mode save as we move through then the last few corners we're P4, but look at the speed we're about to gain here. Kick this up into overtake mode. DRS will be open. It's maximum fuel, of course, in qualifying. And look at this. We keep on climbing up into P3, P2, and P1. By the end of it there, absolutely stunning. Excellent lap. We're really pleased. Like I said, our engine is just absolutely insane. We are P1. Pierre Gassi, our teammate, in P3. They're so, so close between himself and Leclerc. Could have been easily been a 1-2 for Williams, a front row lockout. I think if that actually happened, I think we would have had to actually go on to cancel this virtual Grand Prix just because of pure embarrassment for every other team around us. So with this pace, then, I am very much looking forward to this race here on Sunday. Clear, sunny skies, no issues for us in terms of rain, slow us down we've got the full power with us and obviously if we're actually running close together we can use each other to slipstream one another and try and pull away as well and of course you saw last episode it appears there is something in the air as of late in formula one and uh, the cars appear to be very very fragile you know people are dropping out left right and center it is a survival of the fittest really through these grand prix it is virtual racing but as we saw last episode it seems like the real life issues are creeping into the game and just people are finding it very tricky to finish these Grand Prix. So it's going to be a case of can we even finish this race? Can we survive it? And can we get through to the end? And if we can, I think we could finish up with a very, very good result. You've done well to put it on pole, but we've still got work to do. 
trying to cover the inside line off the start. I very much will be doing that, good sir. I will be squeezing Leclerc to the inside there. I think we can try and get the one too early. And if we can on lap one, then like I said, we can just try and use each other as a nice toe uh, drag on the main stretch and pull away, hopefully. The strategy obviously will be a one stop here with a 25% race in the Road to Glory series. Uh, soft tires to the mediums then. Fuel wise, our engine very efficient, so no need to worry about that. And we just uh, psych ourselves up and get raring to go for round number four of the 2020 season. Here we go on the front row of the grid for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Here we go to five red lights and we are on the way and straight away going to left to squeeze out Leclerc into turn one. He's still there though. Kept his elbows out. We've gone wide though and this safety car has been called out within literal five or six seconds. And look at the top left. Oh dearie me. There are only 13 cars running. Seven DNFs into turn one there. It is a one-two for Williams. Gasly's overtaking Leclerc. He must have overtaken him just before the safety car came out there. So my squeezing did help. But into turn one, absolute calamity for half the grid. Oh, it's that. It's the Haas cars. Surprise, surprise. One of the Haas cars crashed into the other Haas car and then created an absolute pile up there, taking out the other racing point of Red Bulls in the mix there, Renault and McLaren. And so there we go. Look at that beautiful sight there. One, two for Williams. But honestly, that is that is appalling. That is abysmal. That, 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 that start literally could be mimicking this. There we go. Reliant Robin. Oh, no. Well, so here we are then for a second episode in a row then. Safety car straight off the bat on lap number one. And, and somehow I've actually sped under the safety car. I didn't think that was actually possible in a Williams car. We would have even enough speed to go faster than the Delta time of the safety car. But there we go. There's, there's always a new day for something new to learn. And as we go across the line, look at that. The fastest lap of the Grand Prix. A 2 minute 01.276. That... That is pretty damn tasty. And actually probably only one second faster than the actual time Williams would have posted the real life 2020 Azerbaijan Grand Prix if we were going to the Grand Prix this year, but we're not so good for them. Looking to the restart then of this safety car, we get very, very familiar with the rear and they're almost hit the back of the safety car. That would have been quite embarrassing, but here we are then on the end of lap number two, then winding up to this restart there, get the heat into the tyres. Of course, I effectively become the safety car. Now I can control the pace we're going at there. So I just want to go honestly, so I'm not actually going too slowly as we uh, go through the next right hand as we kind of straighten up pretty much now slingshot to the main straight there you can see fourth gear I'm not really slowing them down too much and to be honest I'm actually speeding up here as I want to get going right now so I actually go for it and start accelerating here but the game's going to actually start slowing me down a little bit as we get towards the line I'm actually got a massive gap to gas already then it slows me down on purpose because I almost catch the safety guard then we go again and we're allowed to go into turn one so a bit of an awkward weird restart there for the safety guard but we get it done and we're still P1 so job done there gas has actually had an okay one and kept ahead of Leclerc. But now for how long will we be able to keep this 1-2 for Williams? Like I said, in a straight line, our car is the best. So in theory, just as long as Gasly keeps it tidy through the corners, he should be able to keep Leclerc at bay. And to be fair, on lap number three, he's not only done that, he's also maybe going to be on the back of me as I set a purple and green. He's gone even faster there. He's on the back of us then, pulling away from Leclerc a little bit. And he's going to be right in the slipstream now as we go down the main straight here. It's a straight line all the way now here, forever and ever. And here he comes now. We're going to go down to non-ERS on purpose here. Save the ERS. Save the castle fighting. Because I know he's going to overtake me. Even though I did fight that, he had a good chance of overtaking me. So may as well break a little bit early. Save some fuel. Save the ERS. Come back at him now on the next straight, perhaps. Or the next lap onto that five. As I, the rear end steps out there a little bit. And you can see he's probably pulled away a bit too much there. But Lando Norris sets another fast up the Grand Prix. So everyone going faster and faster here through this Grand Prix. But like I said, can't quite get him on this straight. But let's just be patient. Wait for the next turn on lap number five. Onto that straight. Although I would say that. But now a second safety car's come out. Lads. Come on. We had this last episode. It's happened. Can no one drive in a normal manner? I mean, I can't talk. But still. Can no one drive in a normal manner? I think the incident involved on the Alpha Tauri drivers. Let's see. A three wide between the Alpha Tauri car. Alpha Mo and McLaren there. And there. A little bit of contact made. As you can see on the exit between Kafiat there. And the Alfa Romeo, the McLaren's away. But then, wow, what a dive from Kafiat. And he goes way too deep into that corner. And uh, he's actually he's actually 
part up by the market. So, ironically, as I've said many times when AI crash, I feel like they, they just want to do a bit of shopping, and it's no coincidence that Kafir has parked right in front of a shop called The Market. So, um, I think I've been correct all along. But there's no time to revel in my Illuminati style revelation there, because we're on the safety car, and Gasly will actually come in under the safety car, unfortunately. For the pit stop. He's the first car on track, so fair play, he gets the first call. So I'm gonna have to hope and pray that we go on for two, like another lap, because the safety car does usually go for two laps, but of course, on the first safety car, that second lap was included on the lap where the incident came up, whereas this one, not too sure. So here's the safety car. We're gonna pick it up. I need to kind of almost hope that it goes faster. Like, I could just overtake it, but obviously I'm not allowed to, but I could easily just go down the inside here, overtake it, but we're gonna have to return the position here, but it's just so slow. And obviously Gasly, fair play, like I said, he's the first man on the road, so he got the choice of going for the pit stop first. I could have double stacked, but I feel like that might have lost us positions as well equally. So, but uh, you can see here, I mean, come on, man. Just can, can, can we go a little bit faster? Come on, Bert Mylander, Bert, mate, just go fast. No, okay, go, come on, over to... Bert, Bert, Bert! Oh, come on, lad. I'm le I've left you all the room to the inside, mate. Get through. Oh, my Lord, Bert. My God, mate, I know I know you're just a safeguard driver, but come on, be alert. It's a street circuit. Be and If you're not alert, what are the chances of someone else being alert? None. That's what I'm saying. So come on, pick it up, man. Pick it up. Oh, my God. Box this up, please. <laughs> I'm done. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done. I literally just said, if Bert Mylander is not alert in the safety car, what are the chances of the other people? Two people have just crashed under the safety car. How do you actually physically crash? Three people. Three. Um, um, I, uh, 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 um, I'm speechless. I'm so, how does this happen? And before someone comments below coronavirus, that's what's got them. I'm trying to make this video still monetize, okay? So I'm not gonna say it. I am actually completely baffled by what I've actually just witnessed in front of my eyes. Three people have crashed under a safety car. We have got a total of five people running in this Grand Prix now. Five. Five people. That is one quarter of the grid that began this Grand Prix are now still running it. You know what? Maybe real life Formula 1 had something going. Maybe we should have cancelled this Grand Prix. Maybe it wasn't worth the hassle. And clearly there's some sort of endangerment going on because five people! Here we are then on the restart of this Grand Prix. Lap number six, Gasly is in first place. Second is Leclerc. Third, Perez in the Mercedes. And then Albon behind me. We go and get a great restart to the point where we actually overtake Perez before the start finish line. Then we have to let him back through. But we're side by side and through turn one. We squeeze him out there very nicely indeed. And we're back up into P3. It's a double Williams podium at the moment here. But we could very much make it a 1-2 outfield. We just need to make sure we keep behind and we're close enough to get that toe from Leclerc, but yellow flags has been an incident ahead of us. No, it's oh no ahead of us. Oh no. No, you're not. You're joking. You're, you're actually joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly I can't stand this. This is actually unbelievable. We've got four runners at this Grand Prix, but lads just deep that for a second. We had five runners. Five. All we had to do, all the Williams team had to do was bring the two cars home and you're guaranteed P5 or P4 and they couldn't even manage that. One, one, of, the, one of the cars, as if, I don't know what went on, Gassi was some sort of mechanical failure, it's all over for him and so it's just Leclerc, myself, Perez and Albon there, the two Mercs, Ferrari and me flying the flag for the small boys here and uh, well, we've got to go out and try and get this win then, surely. And we are powering through to catch Leclerc as he punches a hole in the air into turn one. We try to the left. We go to the outside instead. With a lock-up, though, on the front left, we can't manage to get it round the outside. The car has so much power that I literally can't stop it because the brakes aren't good enough. They're not fully upgraded at all on the chassis side of things of the car. So it's always quite a challenge to slow this thing down once it's at full pelt. It's almost like that James May moment of buffeting, buffeting. No, no, the brakes aren't working at all. And so we have to try again maybe on lap number nine there because
because realistically in Sector 2, I really can't make anything work, to be honest. And so with that, once again, we see ourselves flying through this right-hander and going through the kink onto the main pit straight. And we're winding up the car, winding up the speed, overtake mode, no DRS here, pure slipstream. But look at the speed difference of this mighty Williams car versus the Ferrari to the inside now, playing chicken with Leclerc in the brake zone and the wall there on the left-hand side. We're still neck and neck, though, as Leclerc has obviously the downforce advantage in the corners, but we have the acceleration and the power and the willpower as well in the car, literally pushing this stupid IKEA desk of a car on wheels through with a rocket ship in the back. And so here we are, up into first place, cut across the racing line and defend the position, bring it back into first place of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. But for how much longer? We've got four laps to go. Four laps to survive. We've survived everything so far. That apparently has taken everyone else out. So can we just survive simply a little wobbling little red prancing horse car? Let's find out as Leclerc comes back at us on the right-hand side and just powers past basically on towards lap number 10. Taking it easy though because I know there's going to be another chance for us to re-overtake. We don't need to panic. We don't need to, you know, we don't need to do anything rash into turn one. I know there's going to be another chance to overtake him. You can see there we've got a DRS available on this next back straight. So here we go for this second bite of the cherry then pulling through sparking away quite a fair bit compared to the Ferrari cars we ride very low and so into the brake zone we go still neck and neck Leclerc on the right myself on the left there still managed to go side by side now through that left hand Leclerc just about with enough space to work with there we break early go for this switchback move from the left to the right get the power down a little bit earlier than Leclerc can can we now pull this on the outside of this will be very audacious indeed Leclerc gives us the space there on the curb though unsettles the car and Leclerc is able to pull through on the racing line normally and keep P1 for now but it's very close racing it's actually some wonderful racing really good to see I thought potentially after all those crashes we may not see too much racing action here but we're getting some for sure yeah, and it's all for first but it's all for the top four position it can only be for the top four positions no matter what battle it is it will be for the podium positions here absolutely wonderful stuff so here we go once again fighting for the lead here but not much of a fight maybe this time around opening DRS here we're actually done to none ERS and lean fuel mixture because I know that was going to be a slam duck overtake, so I may as well save the fuel, save the ERS. We've got two more laps to go, and I know Leclerc is going to come back at us, so we may as well try and save all these things and make sure we've got enough to fight back, essentially, uh, as he goes for another move. So here we are then on that second part of the chariot of DRS there. He'll have that uh, that chance then to re-overtake me. Overtake mode uh, and Rich Mix there go defensive on the left. He goes the long way around. This time, though, I will not let him have the outside line and keep that through side by side, and we're going to keep P1 as we get the elbow out but that will mean as we move on to lap number 12 he will have a good chance of overtaking us into turn one maybe here he goes he goes for it to the inside we've gone on purpose slow on the ERS and the fuel because I know if I'm behind him at the detection points I'm going to get the DRS so here we go nice and easy hit that apex beautifully get a good exit DRS open and here is where we get him now we're tucked up right in the slipstream he's going to go very defensive early on the left hand side there as we get a screen freeze for good measure but we're there on the right hand side give him all the space in the world and oh my lord Leclerc's crashed he's crashed out of the Grand Prix there's only three runners there's only three run every person who's finishing this race is on the podium this is unbelievable Perez P2 Albon P3 Leclerc what has gone on there he I've given him all the room and some and he's still managed to he just drives straight into the wall what went on there, man? That, this is literally, this is, well, this is what this looks like. Oh, no. No, I've got it back. No, he's, oh, he's lost it. So here we are then on the last lap of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix here in 2020. And there are only three runners. That's, uh, to be honest, very fitting headline for real life to us if we went to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Real, I can't lie. It's a very awkward situation to be in considering what's happening in real life. But there's only three runners. Everyone who finishes is on the podium. And so here we come through for our first win of the season in 2020 for the win at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. You worked hard for that one. Congratulations. Absolutely biblical scenes. Unreal scenes there. We've got the win ahead of both Mercedes cars on the podium with the only three that finished that Grand Prix. There we go. That is... That has been some episode of the F1 Road to Go. We've had many things happen in this series over the three seasons so far, but that... 
that may have taken the, the cookie. Like, in terms of the amount of DNFs, how those did... Like, the last one there with Leclerc. Oh, my word. That is, that is spectacular. This is why F1 the sport is temporary. F1 gaming is forever. And you get moments, spectacular moments, like you've just seen here today in this race. Good day today. Let's have your take on it. It doesn't get much better than a win at this track, does it? No, 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 Claire. It doesn't get any better than a win at Azbajon Grand Prix, especially a win like that. Um, that one was for the fans. I don't know if they're actually allowed to watch that Grand Prix live at the stands. I didn't really take a close look, to be honest, but uh, it was for them and uh, for the team as well. Well, looks like your luck has changed. Things went a lot better than last weekend, didn't they? Reliability, Claire. Reliability. I think if you look at it, really, if you look at the data, um, if you just finished, you would have got third place. So at the end of the day, reliability was the biggest asset for us today. You're surpassing all expectations. Can anything or anyone stop you? As I've said many times, Claire, many, many times, there's nothing that can stop this team now. Only an immovable object. And even that, I feel like our team could get past it rather than every other team crashing out with that object. Appreciate your time. It truly is a marvellous day in the F1 Road to Glory Season 3 here. The win at Baku there. Gasly, even with his DNF and that failure, he gets P5. It's an amazing day. We're still actually a decent amount of points behind Vettel, all things considered, because he had such a strong start to the season, and we did not, really, relative to, to him getting, I think it was two wins in a row, or something like that, so uh, we still got some work to do, but now we're kind of back to where I feel like we need to be in this whole road, you know, if you look at season one, two, three, I think the progress where we are now is where we should kind of be on this kind of trajectory to try and get this glory for the team, basically, there. As we go then to the end of the episode, we do get some bonuses for R&D as well, so some extra cash injection for the team. We're going to go ahead and purchase a, uh, well, as I actually mentioned, a uh, lack of upgrades on the chassis front in that race. We're going to go ahead and purchase a weight reduction upgrade for the chassis. That will come in for next episode. So that will mean we have three upgrades now for next episode. Two on the chassis side, minor and a major, and then the ultimate drag reduction. And I still don't understand how we've got some drag to reduce on this car. So this car somehow is going to get even faster in a straight line come next episode, hopefully if there are no failures. Obviously, this is the first time ever in this series now next episode where we'll actually have some upgrades that could actually fail so we'll uh, not count our chickens quite yet we'll see about that but what a stonking and entertaining mad episode that was therefore road to glory 2020 guys if you did enjoy be sure to smash that like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're new around here then do get subscribed for weekly formula on content of course we've now got many irl gps cancelled so if you need to scratch so if you need to scratch that itch of f1 racing then you can count on myself for f1 gaming content every single day so get subscribed. I've been Aravo. Hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.